sliding glass door uh, just before the show starts repetitively. Night after night. Night after night. It's a bad call, and I'll tell you why, because Drew and I don't put our headphones on until after that, except for the problem is, is after that's when the show starts. <laughs> Each night before the show, we stand here with our, or I should say sit here, and I and I look forward to the day when I say lay here. Oh. Ooh. Uh, when we uh, just sit here with our headphones held out above our heads, but in the o stretched open position, ready to drop down on our noggins as soon as the beginning of the show is over. All right, it is Love Line. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191, fax number 310-854-4455. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician and addition medicine specialist. And I had something I wanted to say, and now I can't remember. Oh, that's nice. That's good. Yeah. You play things right, time. Oh, you did? Yeah. How'd that go? Good. Rough air. Oh. How's he, how's that crackpot doing? He's all right. Got a lot of, a lot of slogans, a lot of shibboleths, empty like, we're going to get the man, we're going to get those fat cats, and we're going to blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. Nice man. Yeah, seems like yeah. it. Well, I, you know, you can't go wrong uh, talking, I mean. Attacking people with money. Attacking yeah. people yeah. with no. money, right. Yeah, but listen, everybody who wants to attack people with money, now that I'm, you know, literally a millionaire, let me explain something. Uh, it, it, it is tantamount to you cutting the head off of the country. Now, I know this is not a popular viewpoint, but you know why most of the people who have money have money? Luck. Uh, po uh, contrary to popular demand? No, they did not inherit it. They're smarter than we are. They work harder. They work longer. They stay up longer. They get up earlier, and they're smarter. And when you combine all those things together, you then have people who have more money than you do, and I do, and Drew does, and Ralph Nader does. Now, it's okay for us to demonize them. That's fine. But let's not cut them off, because that 10% of society pays for 90% of the stuff. And then what will happen is, is all you people who are complaining, you're going to have to start paying for stuff when you cut those people off. The very, I don't know what it is, it's a very alarming number, but a very small percentage of society, maybe it's 7 or 8%, pays for like 95% of everything. Yeah. And all you got to do is think about what uh, Bill Gates is putting in tax wise each year. How many, si picture if you had a little graph. Mm -hmm. It's like Bill Gates, one little, you know, those little um, sort of uh, black silhouette people. Right. They put, like, what, like what's on a bathroom door? Right, right. Picture Bill Gates on one side of the chart. And then how many other little silhouette people to the left side of the chart it would take to fill up with a little dollar sign underneath him in terms of tax revenue? Yeah. Does he need that money? I don't know. Don't care. That's not our business. Our job is not to question whether he needs that much money. Our job is to say, how many of those other little people does he pay for? And the number is one Bill Gates, and then there'd be oh, several million, several, maybe... Maybe a hundred million other people next to Bill Gates. Now, you want to cut that guy's head off? Good plan. I say we just laugh. Shouldn't all those people that are on the left side of the column just be looking over and laughing that he's paying for the roads and the schools that his kids never use? Good point. Isn't that funny? Yeah, good point. Shouldn't we be laughing? Well, let's not attack him. Let's laugh at him. We'll do that, but let's not attack him. Mike? Yeah. You're 20. You're saying? What's up? All right. My girlfriend just went back on birth control, right? Yeah. And she's starting to, like, get nauseous and throwing up because of it. Mm-hmm. And I guess it was her gynecologist said that uh, she could take it rectally. I don't know if she just, you know, blowing smoke up her skirt or what. Well, there are hormones that she can get in suppository form, but... Not really the birth control pill per se. Couldn't he wedge it into his urethra and then fire it, fire it into her rectally? Sure. I mean, Lord knows we've all done that in a pinch. 
No, I, I don't know of any preparation no. that truly the, the usual birth control pill given that way. This progesterone thing you can give a bus suppositories. Those are vaginal suppositories, actually. Oh, I, I've never done a rectal suppository if you don't count a jacuzzi jet in high school. You, you've done more. And when one uh, puts something in one's anus, doesn't it just pop out? No, it slides up. And stays? Mm-hmm. It's pretty... Is that how you get stuff into prison, Drew? Mm-hmm. I, I would think if I put a pill in my ass, it would be much like feeding, like, uh, let's say, a uh, red hot to a dog. Huh. <laughs> like, you ever try to feed something to a dog that doesn't want, and it just puts it in its mouth, and it sits in its mouth a second, and then just falls out? Right, right. <clears throat> no, no, the anus is an instrument. Let me give me a picture. No, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see the anus. I don't want to see the anus. It, it's... It's a little longer than you think. A little, little... Yeah, but how far up there do you got to put that pill before it well, stays? Your colon comes down like this. And, and how this. come, hey, Drew? And then this is this is the outside world here. How come dogs, they don't have the ability to spit? If they want something to come out of their mouth, they have to hang their mouth open right. and lean over and hope that it falls out. How come God? You know, dog can put its leg up and piss across the street. Dog can lick its own nuts. But a dog cannot spit something out of its mouth. It has to open its mouth and let it fall out. Yes, genius. Sweet gamer. Just remember that. Yeah. Uh, this is this has to all the way through all that. That's yeah. How far do you have to get your finger up there, though? Not that far. Like like you know, yay. Wow, just to the first uh, knuckle, just the pinky. But it, 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 the, thing, the thing is designed to slip up. It goes on up. You go pinky, huh? Yeah. I go ring finger. That's yeah. me. I don't know. That's why we're different, Eric. You've had a little practice. Uh, hey, I think I break my pinky off in my asshole if I try to put it in there. It's not big enough. I, I go with the bigger finger. Strong finger. Eric? Hey, what's up? Hey. Um, I had a recent masturbation innovation. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Are you ready? Humanity has moved forward yeah. a giant step tonight. Let me grab that. No, no. Hand, 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 hand. everybody okay? Yeah. All the, uh, I guess there's kind of guys out there. Take out your pens and pencils and paper and whatever. Okay. All right, and let me just jump in for a second here. I am thoroughly prepared to be disappointed. Yes. I am now at 36, and I I never hear anything from anybody that, that interests me anymore. Or I go, oh, my God, I never thought about that. That is true. You're 100% correct. But go ahead, Eric. That hurts. Go ahead, buddy. Um. Okay. All right. What you need is a bed, a pillow, mm -hmm. uh, a little oh, down, pain, uh, preferably, you know, less of that, you know, girly perfume stuff because, you know, that, that, that irritates the Johnson. Mm-hmm. And um, a little uh, washcloth. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you apply the cream in an area, you know, you saturate the washcloth kind of in an area that's kind of as long as, uh, you know, Mr. Winky is. Yeah. And um, just, you know, a little bit wider. And then you've uh, kind of folded over. Mm -hmm. You put that on your bed and you put your pillow on the washcloth. All right, but you understand I do this four times a day. I don't have time to turn it into some MacGyver-esque experiment. Okay, okay, well, you, you just put, you know, you could just, like, put saran wrap over. Okay, so you put the the cream or whatever. the cream in the washcloth. Then where do you put the washcloth? Under the pillow. You put the washcloth over, so, you know, you kind of got yourself, like, a nice little, like, slot, and you put the pillow on it. Mm -hmm. And then you might have like another pillow for your head, and then you you kind of wing it. And you, I see. Are you lying on your back at this no, point? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. He's he, 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 he creating a virtual vagina. I know, but he said you have a pillow for your head. And yeah, so you go forward. Because it's an going forward. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah. he's right. pretending the pillow is a woman. Yeah. Because it's nice. automatic cleaner, and you know, like know about automatic, automatic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all right. It's beautiful. All right. Maybe no one has ever thought of that before, I'm sure. Listen. Glad you thought enough to call Let me that. explain something, and, and uh, I hope most of you are on board with this. I don't masturbate to simulate the feel of a woman. I masturbate to masturbate. Yeah, but at 16, they might be trying to... Yeah, I know, but it's always funny when these guys are like, 
Well, you get a mason jar and you fill it with a chub pack of ground beef. Now, I like 22% fat, but if you want to go 15% or even 8% a leaner, a leaner cut of beef, that's fine. I'm not here to question that. And I'll mix, I'll throw a raw egg in there and I'll mix that thing up. Then I put it in the microwave and I get it just up to body temperature. And if you got six, eight ounces of ground beef in there, usually 25 to 30 seconds. Don't go too long in the microwave or you'll be humping a hamburger. And then once you get it out of the microwave, what I like to do is I like to put a little rust-colored shag carpet around the opening of the mayonnaise jar, the mason jar. That simulates the vaginal hair. Then what I'll go ahead and do is I'll turn on the TV. And uh, I'll put it on the view because there's a lot of women talking on that show. Then what I go ahead and do is I mount up the mason jar with the girls talking in the background and the warmed, not cooked, warmed hamburger beef, beef again, 20, 20% fat is what I like. And I have myself it. And then when I'm done, I feed it to the dog. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, listen, I don't, you know, I'm not Frankenstein. I'm not Dr. Frankenstein in the lab here. Wow. Is that a little too graphic? No, it's all right. I, I know, but it. It, there, there's something there's something about there's something about building a woman. Yeah. Then I'll go down to the hardware store and I'll get 40, 50 feet of fallopian tubing and I'll connect that to the mayonnaise jar. Now you're cooking. There's this fantasy. Do you remember you had that when you were like 14, 15? It's like if I could have a woman. <laughs> You know, like bring her to life or make her my slave. Or the weird her science, so. Yeah, it's weird science. Yeah. But but it's kind of it's kind of the date rape drug <laughs> mixed in. I mean, that's the more reality of it. It's like right. if a woman would just pass out and sort of hold still. I don't want to hurt anybody, but if they would just hold still and just let me do stuff to them, you know? I could run around naked in front of them. I could grab their boob and make a honking sound. <laughs> Then you get a little older, and it's like, oh, screw it. I'm just going to one of those oriental massage places and get myself a reach around. Julie? Yes? You're 16? Yeah. All right, let me explain how you simulate the male penis. <laughs> and by the way, women don't don't go through all this. Well, no, they don't. They Never. certainly Never. don't. Now, <laughs> they sit in a tub, and they think of scented candles. It's like... <laughs> Were you even thinking of a man? No. Well, no I was thinking of a candle. <laughs> like kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Well, who? Oh, okay. well, this guy. Do you, do you like him? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have sex with him? Oh, no. <laughs> Women are, like, screwed up when it comes to masturbating. So you're masturbating to a guy you wouldn't have sex with? You're trying to no, not really no, just no. Get a feeling. I thought about potpourri and scented candles and thought about this gentleman who I passed once. In a, in a car, in the freeway. He was going southbound in the 405. I was going northbound. All right. Anyway, Julie, what's up? Yeah, um, I've been, like, always really pushed, like, intellectually because, like, I was considered a prodigy when I was really little. And right now... Join the club. <laughs> what made you a prodigy? Carpet cleaning prodigy, my What made you a prodigy? Well, um, my dad did. It's like, I used to, like, okay, one time I asked him a question about something about, like, I really love physics, and I'm actually going to go into astrophysics. Right. 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 Hey, 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 hey uh, Newton, hold on a second. Can yeah. you uh, turn the goddamn TV down? Oh, oh sorry. I forgot. I'm looking at Dexter's laboratory. It's just a <laughs> prodigy. You know. Well, well it's the only thing that kind of brought it up was when I was, like, younger. Um, one time I asked my dad a question to me about science, and he said, like, go to the library. And I came back with, like, relativity. And I read it. And I read it when I was, like, four and a half. Right. I don't know. Like, I was getting really into math and science. Right. You and went down to the library alone when you were four and a half? No, he took me. But, okay. All right. <clears throat> so you're into math and science. Well, yeah, and, like, you know, whatever. And I was, he had me take the men's exam when I was really little, when I was five. And I passed for junior men's. Uh -huh. And I've been in it for a while. Oh, well, let me talk to Drew. Don't you think that's just going to screw up a kid, junior men's? It's pushing them. Well, you know what I mean? It's like, hey, everyone, I'm five and a half. I'm a genius. It's, it's a self fulfilling prophecy. It's, 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 it's all the flip side of the, uh, the, the uh, dad going, you'll never amount to anything. You're an idiot. Yeah. It's the opposite of that. Thank God my dad never had the energy to speak with. Oops, wait a minute. Would they have Junior Mensa? Yeah. Are you asking me? Hello? How old do you have to be to get in that Junior Mensa? Um, well, I was a little bit young, but usually about seven is the average age. Seven to twelve. Once you're 
I'm sorry, not 12. Once you're 16, you're in regular Mensa. I just got into regular Mensa because I just turned 16 August 1st. I, uh, I actually, my parents enrolled me in a, um, a club called Tardo when I was uh, <laughs> six. Junior Tardo. And so I was six months young. They punched some paper. Yeah, we put uh, we put uh, cooking pots on our heads and ran around and clamped them into each other. That's uh, anyway. So, so what's happening? Today? Say, yeah, what, what's your IQ? One seventy. Yeah. Or what's happening today? What? What's going on today? Oh, what's up? My question. Yeah. Okay, I have like no interest whatsoever in like. Okay, I do somewhat have like I'm attracted to guys and I have a relationship now. But I don't have any interest in being, like, sexual or intimate at all. Like, I just don't think about it. And I know, like, he's kind of like, oh, well, okay. You know. who, who says that? My boyfriend. Mm. Yeah. So you have a boyfriend. 170 IQ, and she's talking about someone she hasn't brought up the conversation right. yet. Right. And, yeah, but but it can't you. be. You're, you're, you're not just, 170. No, I just said I'm in a relationship. Nobody calls a radio show with the TV blaring in the background the 170 IQ. Uh, you know, I, was, I forgot. Like, I was reading. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, he's not. What are you in high school now? Yeah. Well, yeah. Shouldn't you be in college? I'm going next this fall. Where are you going? I'm going to Yale. Yeah, Yale takes a bunch of youngies. Oh, yeah. they do. Yeah, they do. That's good. What are you going to study? Well, it's they, they, physics. It's they take um, like computer experts and stuff. Uh, well, those are all Asians. It, it's astronomy and um, physics. It's yeah. the, the major together. I see. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a theoretical school? physicist. Why? Because I don't know, I, just, I love it. I really do. Like it's a passion for me. Mm. I, like I, I communicate with um, I don't know. You guys, uh, Stephen Hawking. You communicate with him. He knows you're around. I mean. Yeah. Well, for some like the last year. Okay. How do you communicate with him? Well, my dad used to work at Stanford uh -huh. as a professor there for physics, and I met him when my dad took me to one of his lectures at Cambridge. Interesting. And how do you communicate with him? Like email? Yeah. Or? yeah. How well, he, it's how, not even really him. It's like his um, his assistant guy. He's one of the students. But I see. Where's he at? What university is he at? Cambridge. He's a Cajun professor of mathematics. Oh, I I didn't know. I thought he just sort of rolled rolled <laughs> through the country in an electric does. wheelchair. He does. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Charles Peralt. They just uh, you know fires up that wheelchair and just rolls and goes into a town near you. <laughs> Right, well, so, really, I, I don't know why you're not particularly interested in things. Yeah, you're too smart. Listen, it, you're out there with other things. Sex is for dumb people. Well, we've put a point of that before. When you when you take when you strip everything else away, there's, there's eating and reproduction. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you've transcended sex. You 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 close your eyes, you don't see a naked man. You see uh, Adam splitting. Uh, I think you yeah. will. I think, but you got a lot on your plate. I bet you're stressing yourself out more than you even realize. Uh, you, you attracted to this guy? Yeah. Yeah. How long you been with him? Like six months. Do you like him a lot? What? Do you like him a lot? Yeah. Well, what, uh, you, what are, what, are you, what are you doing with him? Hmm? What are you doing with him physically? Like making out. Yeah. You don't want to go past that. Well. You, you don't have the urge to. Is that pleasurable to you? Uh, not particularly. She's not in yeah, you're not that into no. him. Have you ever been past making out with anybody? Not really. All right. Well, listen. Here's the deal. Truly, mm -hmm. I, I know you're genius, but I'm going to enlighten you anyway. <laughs> okay, you have a certain gift, you know? Yeah. You may be making a little too much of it, but you have a certain gift. And it makes you a little bit different than other people. And so you're going to excel in certain things, like you'll be heading off to Yale next year while your other buddies are still in high school, but in other facets of life, it may slow you down a little bit. And it's just like why the Poindexters aren't the captain of the football team. Why isn't that the same person? Why, why aren't the guys that are out getting a ton of tail getting the straight A's and getting the academic scholarships? It's not always the same brain. It's rarely the same brain. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So here you are excelling at a certain part of life, which is more important, and the other part will come shortly. You may just be a little, as far, ah, here's what I'm going to say. As far ahead as you are academically, which is probably a couple years uh, in front of your peers, you may be a couple years behind socially, or at least physically. Some, some of that energy. Sexually. There's a lot of that energy went into intellectual growth, but my right. social growth. Right. So don't and, worry about it. And, and understand, here's an intellectual uh, sort of tidbit for you, which is that 
you're not into this guy. Learn to read at least your feelings a little bit. Uh, understand when you're really not into somebody, you're not going to respond sexually. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. True. Were you in the, did they have like a gifted program in mm -hmm. your, no, I remember the school. your your school was yeah. the uh, yeah. Little Lord Fauntleroy School of Albino Hemophiliac? Yes, that's right. That's where Drew went to prep school. And uh, where they wore bow, bow ties and a, during casual day it was ascots. <laughs> Friday was casual Friday. They were allowed to wear ascots and um, only the first initial monogram on the lapel of their blazer. Is that true, Drew? On casual days, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shoes with only one. Okay, here's casual day. One, color. one tassel on the shoes. Uh, instead of the bow tie, you wear the ascot and just the first and middle initial, no last initial, on the, on the blazer. There you go. Nice. nice. Cool. Okay. Okay. So the whole school was basically a, a sort of a elite. They, they would be like the Navy SEALs right. academically, right. Right? right? So it's like saying, was there any special Navy SEAL in the group of right. Navy SEAL? And the answer is they're all Navy SEALs. They were like... There were special. A couple ones, guys got no, shot in Nam and got a Purple Heart, but there's no special program for them. Right, because that's all that was. Right, right. We had the. Uh, let's see. When I was in junior high, we had the MGM program, the Mentally Gifted Minds. Seriously? Yeah. And even though. Um, was it MDM also? I was in. Mentally like deficient minds. No, I was. Yeah, even though I was in the TARD program, the <laughs> Star TARD program, I still remember thinking. Isn't mentally gifted mind sort of redundant? Isn't mental and mind? Are we talking about the same thing? Well, the GM program. Yeah, mentally yeah. gifted or gifted mind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you don't you don't have to tack the mind yeah. on at the end of the yeah. mental part, do you? Yeah. What other part of your body could be mentally but gifted? You know how the kinds of people that are in those programs? They need three letters <laughs> for the monogram. <laughs> That's true. And it's, and it's, always, it's always coolest when there's two letters on either side with the big G in the middle. I, yeah, right. I, I was such a horrible student that my counsel. I remember just wanting to take this sort of a basic English class or yeah. just signing up for like Mr. Tompkins English class. And my uh, my counselor said, uh, "Hey, uh, are you sure?" I was like, "Why?" He's, like, He's kind of a hard teacher. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, but it's not like some sort of advanced accelerated program or something, is it?" No, but you know, he kind of you got to like do work in his class. And I was like, "Hey, thanks for the tip, you're right." You say, "Hey, Tardo." No, he didn't call me Tardo back then. <laughs> Just uh, call me by my last name. <laughs> All right, Mister Tommy. I uh, hope you're making that uh, 37 grand. And he can? Kiss my ass. We're going to take ourselves a little break. We'll be back after this. Yep, it is the love line. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Sit around talking to Drew about our very different childhoods. <laughs> very, very. And how. Uh, School for me, and uh, this is 85, maybe 90 percent, every one of my friends, warehouse. Warehouse. Sat around there and wasted time. Brought a brochure in for my basketball hoop. Here it is. Oh, yeah. Is this the one back here? Listen, everybody. <clears throat> oh, listen. I do everything on this show except for talk about uh, whatever it is I'm supposed to be talking about. But let me tell you something. I'm putting a basketball hoop up at my house, and I ain't screwing around. I ain't going with one of these trash can lids for a backboard. There it is. No, that ain't it. Let me tell you what I'm going with. Regulation. That's it right there. That's it. I glass. Know. I know. See it. You understand? I'm going with a glass backboard. 42 by 72. Competition. 42 by 72 and glass. It was a 48 by 72, Adam. 48? Right. Competition. What is NBA? Is that 48 by 6? Is that 4 by 6? Somebody has something bigger than you here. You better get the 48. How dare they? <laughs> It'll make my penis look even smaller when I stand next to it. Keegan? National? Oh. Uh, all right. Don't vote, please, Drew. Okay. You can only dream of my bachelor lifestyle. Right. Keegan? Yeah? You're 14? Yep. What's up? Well, I was sitting in here, my dad walked in and he lifted up my bed and he found my porn collection. Who did? My dad. Oh boy. He just, what, you were sitting there, he walked right in and said, uh, I know what's under here, and then walked out? Yep, and he didn't care. Well, that's good. Well, wait a minute. So what? what's your question? I was wondering if there's something wrong with that or something. Uh, what is, what, what does your porn collection consist of? Girls. Hold on a second. Oh, right, 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 right. 
What do you say? Girls. Girls. We, uh, okay, girls. girls. Yeah, girls. All right, buddy. Well, now that we know exactly what is in your porn collection, we can uh, we can uh, we can take a more informed approach to this question. So you're saying that girls? Yep. Hmm. I see. Okay. Well, in that case, here's a definitive answer. And don't worry about it. Uh, did your dad walk in to sort of prove a point that he knew what you were up to? Or was he just standing here and decided to pull your, your uh, mattress up? Yes. He's making a point. No, He's just letting no, you know he knew no, and, and just, yeah, just putting on that. Nobody cares. Stuff. And listen, all you guys who think you're hiding your magazines between mattresses, uh, between the mattress and the box spring, you are high. People have been hiding stuff there since the dawn of civilization, and parents have been finding it there. Do not put stuff there. When people slept on haystacks. People, people, did it? Parents would check under the hay. Under the hay, between the hay and the, and the ground and the barn. Yes, that's, that's right. right. Do not put stuff under your mattress. That is the, I don't know, there's some sort of instinctual impulse. You know what it is? It must be some sort of chromagnum reptilian brain thing that wants you to sleep on your booty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I got my little treasure and I'm sleeping on it, man. <laughs> Like, I, I, you know, it's like I killed something, yeah. and I'm going to eat it tomorrow, right. Right. and I ain't leaving it over there. I'm going to sleep on it. Yeah. Whether it's money or porn, it's under me. In and if mattress. you want it, you got to, like, roll, you got to wake me up yeah. and move me. In my mattress. Yeah, there's yeah. Like a really uh, symbolic thing to it, but it doesn't make any sense at all. No. Because uh, it, you will be found. Alexis? Yes. You're 26. Yes. What's up? Um, I'm 26. I'm married. I have two girls. I guess I'm kind of experienced in sex, but I've never had an orgasm. Will I ever? No. Do you work with your husband on this? <laughs> yes. And what's? And um, I get I get to the point where I'm going to, but I have to stop every single time. Why? Right when you get up there? Yes. Uh, why? You women are nuts with that. Um. Well, my husband just told me right now because I'm not thinking of potpourri and <laughs> candles. Well, so he has a point there, right? No, no, I don't think of anything. Uh, if I've said this a thousand times, no man has ever gone. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm right there. I, I'm going to come. I'm right, I'm right on this. I'm right, oh, no, 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 stop. No, no, stop, stop. No, sorry. No, can't do it. <laughs> this is no, no, thank you. No, no, just irritated. No, no, stop, stop. <laughs> Forget it. No, it wasn't right. <laughs> has, has a guy ever done that? No. Ever? In human history, no. No, I mean, uh, listen, your your grandparents could kick in the, the front door of your apartment and it'd be like, Granny, uh, Grammy, <laughs> Nana, hold on, hold on. <sighs> okay, what are you guys doing in town? Everyone's like, oh, it's too intense. It's too much. It feels too good. <laughs> Alexis? Yes. <clears throat> Why do women do that? I don't know. That's why I'm calling you. What is, what is the sensation you have that makes you stop? Um, it okay. It really feels good, like I'm going to have an orgasm. I think, but then it turns into a hurt almost. Yeah, you, you got to work with your partner on this. You one. have been. For is, is it is it is it like too intense? I think so. Yeah. I get really tight, like intense type of. Yeah. Feeling. Right, but uh, it's like it's it's too intense in the sense that like. Like I said, when you put you ever put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, it's irritating. Yes. And it like it's it, irritating. It pickles, but it, all right, everyone do that. All right, you ready? Everyone put you, way on the top, way on the top. Put your tongue up Very on the roof tight. of your mouth on your palate. Okay, ready? One. Lightly brush your tongue. Okay. Okay. Lightly brush. Right. One, two, three, go. No. <laughs> People know what it feels. <laughs> oh, wait a minute! It worked. <laughs> Drew, put your tongue on the roof of my mouth. Oh, that's going to come out of it. Yikes. All right, so it's too intense. Anything weird happen to you that we need to know about? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> like when I was younger? Yeah. Um, When I was young, my mom's dad, or my mom's husband, I mean, tried to molest me and my sister, but I don't think he really did. Yeah. You don't think so? still kind of weird that you were living with a guy who was trying to do it, though, right? Yes. You're fairly jovial about the attempted yeah. molestation. God bless you. Hey, she's kidding. Imagine if he'd raped her, she'd be hysterical. 
<laughs> it's got finger bang me. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, you should have been there. I, I wish I had a uh, video camera. All right, because well, like, I don't think that's the big issue here. I, I just think you got to work with your husband. Hey, me, oral sex. We, we've been working on this for... All right, how about you getting going? How about you getting going with, like, a vibrator or water jet or something? <laughs> I, well, another thing, okay, um... I'm, okay. I'm really open to more things now, but I hadn't been for a long time, yeah. I think. All right, listen. Uh, Alexis, here's what you need to do. Work on yourself, minus your husband. Get yourself a vibrator. Check it out. Find your space. Find your spot, and then you can start incorporating him. There you go. All right? I have something true to tell you that well, I know for a fact. I worked in, like, special ed department with a lot of teachers and stuff, and... What I always heard from these women, 99% of all women masturbate, and the other 1% is lying. No, that's a man. That is a man. That, that, they were wrong. They never believed me. No, we're, we're, a lot of women do, but it's not as prevalent as with men. These are special ed teachers. Nice. Oh. Oh. Uh, hey, God bless the special ed people, I think. Yeah. All right. Jessica? Uh -huh. You're 15. What's up? Okay. I was, like, with my boyfriend at the mall, and my dad comes up, and he, like, straight in my face, he tells me, what are you doing with this white boy? And then he starts going on and on about how I shouldn't date white people when his wife is white. This is in front of everybody? Yeah, in front of my boyfriend. Now he won't even talk to me because he's scared he's going to get me in trouble. Listen, he's black, you're mixed, right? I'm... How do you know what she is? White. She said his wife is white. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> my oh, dad's a, wife is well, maybe they're not, maybe they're not black. But that's not your mom? Mexican or something. Okay, see, look, I'm Dominican Republic, Nicaraguan, and black. And I get the Dominican Republic and the Nicaraguan for my father. <clears throat> and he is married to a white woman. Uh, and they have a little white little son. Wait a minute, where'd you get the black part then? My mother. Well, he's married to a black woman, but that's not a white woman, but that, I mean, uh, that's not your original mom. Yeah. So, so he has. For himself, he's not particularly concerned about race issues. I guess. But somehow for you... Yeah, it's like, and he said it like right in front of him. He didn't like pull me aside to tell me he said it right in front of him. Did he explain why? No, he just like, no, you shouldn't be with And, and the parents, uh, it's so bizarre. All right, wait a minute, I'm trying to get this. You're Dominican Republican, uh, black. black and Nicaraguan. Nicaraguan. Right, and... Uh, he's... Yeah, you don't like, uh, the, how you guys doing with the El Salvadorians? You're still not into them, huh? Uh, you don't like those people? I don't know. Oh, okay. She's fine. She's American. American. And your boyfriend is what? White. He's white. He's white. And, and your dad's black. No. no. Uh, your mommy's black. So your dad's Mexican and your mom's black. Yeah, he's Hispanic. And he doesn't want you to date the white guy? Exactly. Oh, his wife, his wife is black. He's white now. He's currently yeah, white. new wife. New wife is white. Yeah. Old one's black. All right. All right. What a... Well, it's great. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, good. It's good. Uh, but why he chooses to set limits with you on this stuff is very bizarre. Well, what does he want you to date? I don't know. I guess he wants me to date black people. But I'm like, a lot of times I'm not attracted to black people because a lot of black boys around here in D.C. like have cornrows. And I don't like that. I don't like the braids in their hair. I oh, I see. Yeah. And so I like dating. I like the cornrows. It's just when they pull them out, it gets a little scary. Ever seen like a like, uh, Snoop Dogg pulls those cornrows out? Especially when like half his head is undone and the other half is in cornrow. One half's like bozo and the uh, other half is all pulled back. All right, well, what about uh, find yourself a nice uh, Nicaraguan guy or Dominican guy? Because why would I go with somebody to make my father happy? I'm going with somebody but, to make me happy. But I would yeah. suggest that you wouldn't really be perceiving people's color that much because you were raised around lots of different ethnicities. So you're not going to be sort of thinking that way. Oh, why? The, I, the only time I've seen parents really get take issue with this is when they themselves had a hard time as a mixed race couple, and they don't want to see your you go through that as a child. Well, or they're but, prejudiced. But, but how could they be if they're, they're not an issue to them in a personal life? Well, sometimes people can have their own life and project it uh -huh. onto others. Right? I mean, that happens a lot. All right, hey Jessica. Uh huh. You uh you date a nice stay with the white guy. Whatever. Don't, Whatever. Tell, don't talk to me because he doesn't want to get me in trouble. Uh, the white guy? Yes, he will not call me. He doesn't talk to me at school. He doesn't do anything. He just like, like oh, hold on, let me talk to Drew he's for a second. Huh? No, no, he's not. But he doesn't like her. Oh, okay. think about that. Maybe Dad's really scared the hell out of him. Well, what is the dad's makeup? Because let me tell you, uh, Dominican, black, and uh, Nicaraguan—that's like a Doberman and Rottweiler. 
thing they see on a course that got scared. What you want is Jew with a little sprinkling of Asian. That's an ass you can get. You don't want that black Nicaraguan and Dominican. That's like uh, some sort of, you know, uh, uh, all you got to do is, is, you know, sprinkle a little like a Shiite Muslim in there, and you got uh, some kind of black belt uh, terrorist with a machine gun. That's a horrible, uh, you, like I said, that's, that's Pitbull. A Doberman and a Rottweiler. That's nice the way you, you just you understand in, it? in one fell swoop create racial sort of epithets that cover most that's, of humanity. That's a compliment. I'm paying them uh, a compliment. I understand. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's take a break. Huh? All right, hold on. Jessica, okay. hey, he, this guy is he's white and he's scared. That's all. Probably. But he doesn't like you anymore because he talked to you at school. No, he doesn't talk to me. He, 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 I know. He's if like, he, if he, he, he little card and he says, "Oh, I can't talk to you because I don't want you to get in trouble." And I, I know, but that that, that just stuff. means that just means he's done with the relationship. I, I'm sorry to drop that bomb on you, but everyone, close your eyes, and then touch the roof of your mouth. No, everyone, picture someone you're really into, and you run into their dad, and the dad says, "You two got to break up." And you're really into this person, and they see you at school, and they want to come up and talk to you, and you go, "No, I can't talk to them." That ain't a person you're into. What you do is you talk to them and you go, hey, next yeah. time we meet, let's not have your uh, your mutt dad running around. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. All right. We'll take a break. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. 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 Love line. I'm I'm just tired of talking. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Back door there. I have it. That 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 drew. Oh man, I took a nap today, brother. Oh, I didn't even know where I was. Good. Oh, I was in I was in strong. I was in deep, and it was one of those naps that was I was in so deep that when the the outside noises started, I started working them in. Mm, in the drain. Yeah, my uh, maid. Was uh, downstairs with the vacuum. Boy, I sound like big time, don't I? <laughs> she only comes once every other week. But the point is, she was vacuuming. I worked that ass right into my dream. I was being naturally. It's never a good thing. Someone fires up a vacuum. Uh, I'm getting sucked through some porthole in time. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, run over you. yeah, and I'm being sucked down some uh, sewer drain or something. It can never just be a good noise. Could be uh, some sort of vacuum device on my penis or something. I have to be getting sucked into some uh, some uh, storm drain. But uh, anyway, man, it was good. Joe. Yeah, what's happening? I'm still asleep from uh, this this afternoon's nap. Hope you enjoyed it. I shan't remember this show. Hope you re hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Reason I'm calling. All right, I'm 28. I have a really good friend that I've known or we've known for like seven years. He's gay. Um, and, you know, he's always been one of the strange ones, but a really cool guy, whatever, whatever. You know, we've helped him through a lot. He's been through a lot of, you know, crap in his life, whatever. But now I think he's messing around with, like, a, like a kid who's probably, like, 15. But who is this guy, the 30-year-old? Friend of his. Just a friend. You know, we used to live next to him in some apartments. You know, we've known him for a long time. Just always, you know, someone we hung out with and helped out. Who, who's we? Gay Bob, my right? Wife and, my, my wife and I. Your wife and you. We, we lived in the apartments before we got married. and We've known him for seven years, you know. I see. And what makes you think he's with the 15 year old now? Um, just like when he just recently moved closer, like to us, and he doesn't work or anything. He's home all the time. He's on disability. You know. What? What's the disability? Working it. It started, you know, as a mental type thing. Yeah. He was supposed to be on medication, but he doesn't really need the medication. That made him worse. Uh, no. Wait a minute. People don't get on chronic disability for psychiatric reasons that don't need to be on medicine. Um, well, he tried to work it that way because he was in jail already, and he didn't want to be in that portion, so it kind of just leaned towards that way. Jail for what? He 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 was in jail for like uh, he was in, it just happened to be with somebody who they had drugs in the car or something like that. Ended up in jail and didn't really like that portion of it. Didn't fit so well, and he thought that. Joe, so, did you have a sister who could possibly marry this guy? <laughs> That's like a lovely chance. All right, so Joe, here's the deal. You you think that he is feeling up some 15 year old, right? And the thing is, it's weird, you know. And I found out not too long ago, and it really pissed me off. Apparently, like when he was like 14, and he went off to camp, and he was a kid. You know, he, he some older guy, a counselor or something, was with him, and I was telling him, you know, that's sick. And somebody ought to beat that dude's ass. He should be found and, and buried, basically. 
you know, that's totally wrong. Right. And he was just like, no, no, I was into it, you know, you know. Right, because somebody got to him when he was a little kid. Somebody turned him gay. No, but somebody, uh, somebody sexually abused him when he was a little, little kid. turned him gay. Joe? Yeah. Uh, all right, so here, here's the deal. A, probably not a great friend. B, if you think that this guy is screwing around with a 15-year-old, you should report him. you got to call the police. And then stop idealizing him. He, he's a criminal. Mm -hmm. He's got psychiatric problems. He's not compliant with his medication. Uh, this guy's real serious trouble. And now he's he's damaging a 15-year-old. I want to get the problem with everybody. I've done a fair amount of this with my friend. People you know, all of a sudden they're okay. Eh, he's killed a few people. Right. Sure, he breaks into hospitals and steals medical supplies yeah. and, uh, you know, doesn't pay taxes and beats his wife. He's a such a nice guy. You don't know her, but yeah. he's a decent guy. He's a, no, 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 he's an all right guy. You, you got to know him. He's the only reason he went to jail in the first place. He just happened to be in the car. Somebody else had the drugs. I mean, this, he just got a bad rap. Wait a minute. I know. I know. You know, it's funny, too. Listen, I don't even care if someone is uh, a criminal. Yeah, I, I meet people that are a-holes, and people are like, Stu's a little bit of an a-hole. you got to get to know him. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I don't. And like, sure, once you guys spend like a good weekend together in Palm Springs in a bungalow, then you'll realize that Stu is like, why do I want to get to know a guy who's an a-hole better? You know what I mean? And, and people are like, no, 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 no. You'll find out one day. And I'm like, oh, who cares? Yeah. Although a lot of people feel that way about me. <laughs> That's true, I must admit. No. They don't? No, no. I do. I get a lot of reports. <laughs> what do you mean? Jimmy uh, told me uh, this weekend, he said, uh, you know, uh, we just uh, were hanging out with some people in San Francisco, and uh, they thought I didn't like them. And, uh, just to believe ahead. Jimmy, yeah, and Jimmy goes, uh Jimmy goes, you know, I get that a lot. A lot of people don't think uh, I like them. But you, you don't. But I don't. Yeah. yeah. I, so, I, I, I know you well enough to know that's true. I didn't want to say anything to Jimmy, but uh, that's true. You're right. All right. All right. Well, the only thing I like about Jimmy says to you is he tells you to just to take it easy on me when you get outlandish. Oh, really? Yeah. Does he? Yeah. Ah. TJ? TJ. TJ. Yeah. All right. You're 17. What's up? I've been trying to do oral sex on my girlfriend, but I can't bring myself to do it. You don't like it? I don't. I haven't tried it not to like it. I just can't do it. Why can't you do it? I don't know. I get close. I get to the belly button. But, uh, it reminds me of watching the people in Survivor trying to eat maggots. Did they, they try to eat maggots? Well, they ate them, yeah. Oh, yeah. Giant ones. Oh, giant maggots? Yeah. So I was wondering what yeah. can I do. Um... What do you? Well, what's your nationality? Black. Yeah. All right. From you have a genetic predisposition not to like to uh, eat out a woman. <laughs> There's a problem there. Black guys don't like that. Jamaicans pick, isn't that right? Yeah. I, hey, listen, all you people who want to think that there's no differences between any culture, good or bad, there are differences. Black guys don't like going down on women so much. That's interesting. I, 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 I don't know what it is. They got such big penises, they don't have to. Uh. Yeah, that, you have to. That's what it is. I have to. I gotta. Are you kidding? I gotta get down there at, at, at the door before the date starts. It's actually part of evolution. You guys that white guys at the conference many many generations ago. <laughs> that's right. The Corollas so, were were all, uh, all all had their head. The, the family crest. Remember, I used to tell you what they uh, It was a dumpster with a futon leaned up against it, <laughs> which used to be the Corolla family crest. It is now. Uh, I realize it's a uh, parted legs and my dad uh, coming up for air. But the, 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 uh, in order to reproduce, you have to develop an alternative. Right, that right, right. Yeah. Black guys don't have to do that. Right. They have no waste in a big schlong and a washboard abs. Hey, TJ? Yeah? I, I Just jump in. You're 17. Just jump in. I, I, I don't overthink it. Just jump in. <laughs> Very interesting point. Yes. It's true, like... If you're a uh, guy with a beer gut and you're lily white and you have a small penis, you sure as hell better get down there and get busy. What else is that? You know what I mean? Okay. What's the incentive? Why come back for seconds? Why we'll start in the first place? Interesting. And so that that whole skill, the saying that skill of preference, needed to evolve. The black the man with the thin waist, the washboard abs, and the big penis does not have to go down there. It just it didn't evolve as a as a necessary element of preference, taste, or skill. Interesting. But what about the enlarged nostrils the black man has for breathing? 
Would that be no, it's part something of, that would be useful the, during the oral sex? No, it's, it's a get do more option during the actual intercourse. Oh, during the intercourse. Interesting, interesting. All right, all food for thought, everybody. We're uh, going to take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll speak to uh, Christian, who's 23, start masturbating and help herself sleep. Wants to know if that's normal. We'll tell her it is after this. Coolio going to be in here uh, later in the week, SR71, and uh, Cindy Margolis. He won't be. No, I won't. Uh, Stryker's going to fill in tomorrow night. Yep. And then... Fabulous. David Allen Greer is going to be in here for two nights. Mm -hmm. David Allen Greer is uh, a very funny, very smart, smart, very troubled young man. (laughs) (laughs) No, he's a very nice guy. He's got a ton of energy. I'm guessing he was molested when he was younger, but he, I don't know where he gets that energy, but he's got a ton of energy, and he, uh, anyone who knows him from In Living Color, McCann, or maybe. McCann, or stuff like that, <laughs> many of his uh, movies, but especially In Living Color, I mean, this guy is a, is a, is a, a, a talent, and uh, he's going to come in here for a couple nights and hang in with True, and uh, he doesn't have to, but he's going to, and God bless him. All right. Just uh, hope he doesn't do too good a job. Christian? Yeah. You're 23. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm calling because I have started masturbating in my sleep. Like, if you're asleep, how do you know that? Because my boyfriend has told me. I live with my boyfriend, and he tells me that I'll just start masturbating, and well, sometimes I'll finish myself off, but um, I don't is that, know. Is that something you've ever done when you're awake? I just, no, I do it when I'm awake too, but I've right. never done it while I've been sleeping. Well, now you have. <laughs> uh, all right, that's good time. Listen, uh, uh, real quick, all that stuff you do when you're asleep that everyone puts a ton of thought and credence and importance. effort and importance into, forget it. All those dreams you have, forget them. All that stuff you do when you roll over and you grab your girlfriend's ass, forget it. You're asleep. Just, you're asleep. Just forget it. It don't mean anything. But, but interestingly, the same thing can be said of what you do when you're on drugs. You mean forget yeah. it? Well, you're on drugs. Well, so what's your point? Just the point that people don't think about. It's easy if people accept sleep. It's like, oh, I'll sleep. No big deal. But on drugs, somehow, there's got to be meaning and motivation. And, uh, hey, you're on drugs. You do weird stuff when you're on drugs. Yeah, but, no, I, I would also argue... I, I would argue it was the other way around. Like, hey, I did a bunch of stupid ass when I was drunk. Well, you were drunk. What are you going to do? But that seems to mean something that every time you get loaded, you decide to urinate onto a yeah, uh, turntable. You get loaded too much. You get loaded too much. But in your sleep is when everyone tries to distill it down and oh, I see. pick it apart, right, put right, the right. final point on it. Right, and right. I'm saying, hey, you're just asleep. You do stupid right, stuff. Right. Once in a while, you wake up and... uh you know, you the phone rings and you pick up the alarm clock and start talking into it. Right. It's, is it? You, you don't. You're not having a brain tumor. You're not. You're been abducted. You you're sleep. asleep. Yeah. That's the way that goes. Josh. Yeah. You're 17. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to say you guys both rock. Have been listening to you guys for years. Finally got through one of these times. But um, I've got a question for right. I guess Adam. Yeah. Um. Hopefully you can help me out with this. Uh, uh me and my boy. And this girl that I'm really into went out to a club last night, and all three of us were rolling face. We're um, what? I'm sorry. We were not face. I'm sorry. We're rolling. They call it rolling face, did you say? Yeah. How does this go rolling? Well, when it's really hard, and you guys, uh, and when you're really into it, mm. and the way I heard rolling face. Oh, rolling face. All right. Yeah. So rolling is doing doing actually rolling face, doing a lot of it. So. Do, well, not necessarily a lot of it, but getting a really really good roll out of it. All right, and and. Uh, like something like far out, that would be good. <laughs> I haven't heard that one in a while, but far I, out. I could throw it in once in a while. Uh, and uh, you know, there's not enough of that humor on TV anymore <laughs> either, Drew. You ever see that where the parent says uh, uh, far Ooh. up, Groovy. No, but no, where they mispronounce it. Right. Where uh, like the uh, white cop on Sanford and Son would come in and he'd go, "What it? What it ain't?" Yeah. Or uh, give me. Three, my man. You know, and I was always like screwing up lingo. It was real funny. It was a Brady Bunch where Alice would go, uh, uh, 
Uh, wow, that's heavy. Uh, far up. And then we'd always screw it up, and it was always a big laugh track there. Uh-huh. Yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. Am I on no, right three? Oh, I was on three? I'm sorry about that. Josh? Yeah, Groovy. Yeah, so you're rolling face. Right, Um, and, like, he was all up on her, and he knew how into it I was and everything. And I, like, he pulled him aside, mm-hmm. let him know what's up, told him, you know, to back off because I wasn't in, you know, I wasn't chill with what he was doing. Poor Rick, I don't chill. And the second that uh, we got back to where we were sitting, mm-hmm. first thing he did was just get right back on her and start hugging her and mm-hmm. hanging all over and pulled her away to go down. All right, but he, he had a ton of acts in him. I'm saying, but... Well, this is what we were talking about three minutes ago. Well, you, know, you go out with a girl you like, you bring one of your buddies, you get them all hopped up on X, and then you're surprised when he's dancing with her. I mean, like, I, I was chill with him dancing and everything on X, but then it continued over in tonight. I mean, like... Well, then what happened? He knew how upset I was and everything, and he went ahead and asked her out, and then I saw him before he went out with her tonight, and he totally, like, played it off, and I was like, I asked him straight up, are you too chilling tonight and he's tried to find like a way of weaving out of it he's like well yeah but we're also chilling with these people tonight so it's not like we're going alone he, they were just going to go into his hizzy or his, his crib or his, something like that <laughs> here's the reality she not into you she into him excuse me that's reality here, huh? <laughs> he heard I, no, I, didn't hear what he said. I know but you heard every word we said except for the part where Drew said she's into him and not into you uh, I know I thought you did I know she I didn't catch that but I really didn't listen sorry Josh She's in it. She's in it. There's two choices here. She's either into him and not into you, or she was into both of you and he happened to step up. So and, 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 either way, it's game over. The game off. Yeah. The thing is, what I mean tonight, I told like he was my best friend for years. Yeah. And tonight I called him up and I totally just like told him I never want to talk to him again, never want to see him again. Yeah, and he's like, uh, hey, can I call you back? I'm getting blown. <laughs> Nah, actually, he, I mean, he was pretty Sorry. bummed about it. He was telling me that all the stuff that I thought wasn't true. And, and I know, but listen, about hey, it but, but Josh, Josh, hold on a second. Hold on. This is that energy you and I lost many years ago. Yeah, you like this girl, and he likes this girl. You, I, I you, do like this girl. Yeah. Says, I think he does like her. He does like her. That's why he's chilling with her. That's why Holmes is chilling with her. <laughs> all right? Now... He's trying to play it off to you like he's not that into her because he knows you're into her. You're going to afraid. And he's tired of you talking about it. But he's into her. All right? And if you could be with her, you'd be with her, too. And he's with her for the same reasons you want to be with her. And she's And this to stuff him. goes on all the time, and it happens. And sometimes you lose, and other times you lose. That's what, <laughs> that, was that, your, that was your story. That's what I found out. You lose some, you lose some. Yeah. That's the message that was driven home to me when I was in high school. You, you really, listen, here's the deal. It's a shame to start okay. the friendship over this. Here's what I'm going to say to all you screwed up teenage boys out there. If you got a girlfriend, and she is your girlfriend, and one of your boys moves in on her, hey, that's ground for dismissal for both her of, both and of him. Yeah. But if you're liking some chick and you're just floating around and you ain't making a move, it's like if you're in an auction and something comes up on the block, some uh, Carl Yastrzemski uh, trading card that you got your heart set on, but you don't raise your hand and your buddy w- does, gets it. he gets the card. That's That's his card. It's your fault. And it's your fault. Now, if it was stolen from your collection yeah. by him, yeah. that's different. And if maybe you didn't have the money to pay for the card, another, but still his card. Are we really talking about a card right now, or are we talking about a card? Uh, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's not the right match. She may not right. end it, this guy. She right. right. But, the, 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 but the, the auction analogy is a good one. I think so. you got to raise your hand as a guy. And if you're just going to sit there in the audience and hover around and wonder whether to make a move or not, someone else is going to make a move and go home with whatever's up on the block. And in that case, it's vagina. <laughs> We got a dozen of the what I am, 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 what what I am, 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 what I I did one of those, uh, I did like a, uh, uh, I modeled a, like a raccoon coat or something for some sports show mm-hmm. like three weeks ago in Vegas, and the guy, 
<laughs> and it was a bunch of old codgers out there, and they're like, you know, a bunch of gray hairs in their 70s or some sports show, and they didn't seem to like me or know who I was or anything. How the hell did you get wrapped into that one? It's a long story, but I grabbed the microphone from the guy, and I was wearing this, like, uh, camel hair full length uh, duster or something. It was like five. It, it, the jacket was worth like 1800 bucks. They only got like 350 for it, probably because I was wearing it. Huh. I grabbed the mic from the guy at a certain point, and I said, really, like, sternly and seriously, I said, listen, don't expect this jacket to look this good on any of you. And I was making a joke, but it's stunned silence of the ballroom of some big hotel. It was like 700 people, no one laughed. And I realized, okay, they're just pissed off now. Okay. Mental note, do not go on stage with Adam Crow ever again. No, I had the right. same experience with the Teen Choice Wars with you. How dare you? How dare you? What, you mean when I said that uh, the entire audience would die of... Uh, Syphilis before their 18th birthday. Mm, yeah, I think that's something to do with it. I didn't say the entire audience. I said most of you in the audience. I said Dr. Drew told me backstage that 40% of you will die of syphilis before your 18th birthday. Then the cricket sound <laughs> came in, and so you figured, now I have to see who I left out. Oh, Ricky Lake's backstage. I got to solve her now too. You know what? I'm, you know what I'm starting to realize? <laughs> Stuff that I think is funny, other people don't think is funny sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, like most of the time? Yeah. It's tough being a comedian when the stuff you think is funny yeah. is the stuff other people don't think is funny. It's, it's almost one of the elements you need as a comedian, if you really think about it. You, you know what I mean? Like It'd be like being an interior decorator, and the stuff you like is the stuff everyone else hates. That's rough. It's a true artiste, though, after all. You know, that's, you know, that's, you know, that's right. You're know, right. encumbered by a person by style. Nobody asked a Cezanne or yeah. a Van Gogh what they like. Well, they they, they paint, it, paint it the way I like they it. They hate it, in fact. They that's did. right. That's right. So when you're dead and gone, we'll all learn to appreciate what you've delivered in the country. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Thank God. Well, as you know, I have a plan to uh, fake my own death nice. and then commit suicide. <laughs> I remember you said about things you thought subtle, were funny. There's a subtle difference. Okay. All right, John? Yeah. All right. What's up? Man, first of all, I want to tell you guys, you're the great guys. Mm. Love you guys. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, Adam, mm. I saw you uh, last time. You, were, you and Jimmy were playing softball. It Where? Good. Oh, uh, Montecito. In Santa Barbara? Uh, no, in LA. It's in Montecito. Oh, yeah, yeah. Were you on that other team? No, no, no. Um, uh, I don't know if you remember my brother, Josh. Well, uh, uh, I don't know. You probably don't. You know, you can see a lot of people. But... What, what What was your brother doing? Oh, um, he's the one with the, said that we had our band going. Oh, we, we were playing at a park, right? Yeah, you guys were playing at a park. And you guys were uh, hanging out. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got some game, right? Yeah, you got some game. You and Jimmy, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I was in the hospital a while ago for, like, overdosing, and, um, on what? Um, you know what? The, the the drug that came out, it was like, it came out negative. The test yeah. came out negative. What'd you take? Uh, I was smoking weed and they, like, and I had overdosed and I had to go to the emergency room. What do you mean you overdosed? What happened? Like, um, I don't know. You know, I was smoking weed, but they found the substance in, in it, but it came out negative because they said... What do you mean you overdosed? What caused you to go to the hospital? Um, you know what? I'm not sure. They said that it was ne the... Done. Did you stop breathing? Yeah, like my heart started pumping really fast. Right. It was fast. They said that it got it to about 180. Right. And I came real close to dying, but they said that it could have been a new drug. That's why it uh, it didn't detect it. Right. You mean, you mean the, the, the weed was laced with yeah, something? Yeah, it was laced with something. I got it laced. So. so it's not an overdose. It's just some sort of drug exposure. You sure it wasn't just the drug itself? You know, it could have been. And you just had some sort of awful panic attack or something? Yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, it was kind of like a panic attack. Yeah. I had to go to the emergency room. Yeah. Anyway, so they were, they were giving me a um, test. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, you know, they made me stick like a Q-tip in my, in my penis. They're looking for a sexually transmitted yeah, disease. Yeah, like a swab thing. Mm -hmm. And then, well, I, I rubbed like, I, you know how you have to stick it in about an inch? Mm -hmm. Well, I only stick it in like about a little bit. And I had like a niche on the side of my penis, like, and I kind of rubbed it on the side. And like about three days later, I started getting like a little blister. And and it, it started hurting, like the pus started coming out. Oh boy. And on the skin, not inside the yeah, area. No, like, where the, yeah, not, not on the side. Oh, my okay. chest started to hurt now. Where like, where you rub it, where I rubbed it, 
and like a little blister started coming out and like for the first days it started like about the first couple of days like pus started coming out and then after like now blood's coming out Ouch! Yeah. so wait a minute I'm not, I can't quite picture what you've done look I listen they gave him the swab and pulled the foot off his penis yeah did they do that you can do it that way yeah why don't they do more of that all right but it's so it's so uh puritanically gratifying to, to cram a cute up up yeah. the other yeah 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 how how far do they how far do you have to put up there? just barely in just barely in mm -hmm. why in just to get whatever's inside of it you've got to swab the surface of uh, the urethra mm -hmm. and the last eighth of an inch or so is considered the outside of your penis right so you got to get in what a quarter three eighths quarter five six quarter feet. Max. yeah quarter max healthy yeah. quarter yeah What's that about? Yeah. Five sixteenths. Uh, oh, hell, a quarter's, uh, uh, you look between my fingers. That's a quarter? Well, that's a healthy quarter. Yeah, give me, yeah. give me an unhealthy quarter. Then. You want a light quarter? Three sixteenths. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so what, what should you do? Get back to this? Yeah, I mean, it's funny to look at this. I can't even picture what he's describing. It's some sort of infection, obviously. And whether or not he, I wonder if he perforated part of the urethra with uh, the, he said he scraped something inside there and he might have really right. done something. Listen, let's talk to Derek. Derek is 21. Derek? What's up, Adam? What is happening? Not much, man. How you doing, Dr. Drew? Derek? Uh, say, Adam, I got your regulation backboard sizes. Oh, good. Please, lay those on me because, uh, as I said, I, uh, I bought myself a basketball uh, backboard today and uh, I went with the glass. Real glass. Do you hear me, all you low renters out there? Not, not, Real glass not, not of the a Corolla house. Yeah, but you know what the deal is? I mean, it's see through, not glass. It's not lucite, right? No, it is glass. Really? Yes. You know what they're saying, though? Because I'm going to do coke off it later on. What are they saying? I'm going to do vertical well, coke lines. The prices are Lexans actually more expensive. The what? Lexan. Like what? plastic Lexan? No, I, I was told that the Lucite or the, the plexiglass was like 500 bucks cheaper than the glass. Mm. Well, anyway, here's your sizes, bro. Yeah. Three and a half feet by six feet. Yeah, that's 42 by 72. Yep. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. I think, what are they like? I think they're an inch and a half thick, too, so. Yeah. I don't really, uh, I don't really, yeah, I don't really care what the thickness is so much, just as long as it's a uh, real glass. I think you can get them with lifetime warranties, mm. too, so. If you yeah, can... well, you know, uh, they called me Chocolate Thunder in high school because I used to take down a lot of the backboards. Especially if you have a uh, door number, right? No, I, no, I did it with a BB gun. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't, I wasn't hanging on any rim. I did it from the stands of the BB gun truck. <laughs> yeah. All right, Derek, thanks for that. Okay, I got a question for you. Oh, boy. What, what was up with Stryker last week? It felt like two hours of lightning round. Oh, really? Well, yeah. he's a radio guy. Oh, man. I was dying. What's wrong with the two hours of the lightning round? Oh, it's crazy. Well, what do you mean? It was too fast-paced? Yeah, compared to you, normally, the yeah. commentaries were out there. Well, I'm high on Quaaludes and Bacardi. <laughs> That's the problem. But let me explain what how this show works and what the problem is and how it goes. I am told constantly to take more calls and stop talking about my dad and my backboard and my garbage man and all the tons of other things that don't interest the people who listen to this show. My problem is, is I cannot do that. Because the day we, we notice the day I do that is the day I lose interest in the show because I'm not talking about my own life. <laughs> uh, me and me, and I like to refer to myself moi. <laughs> All right, and I've been told since I started this show five years ago: take more calls and hurry up, and enough of your personal insights and stories. But I can't do it. I can't do it. I find myself so fascinated, and I can't accept that people don't either. All things we know well, right. And uh, and then I and, and then you tell jokes and talk about things that you think are funny but nobody else does. That's yeah. what I do. That's, That's what makes me a bad comedian. And then I talk about space camp for fifteen minutes. What? Who brought that up? Some, oh, uh, I was like, what, what was with the space camp thing? Somebody from ABC called me and uh, complimented me on uh, oh. my space camp jag. So how dare you and how dare you? And let me just say this, by the way. I watched that Buzz Lightyear cartoon that I didn't know I was in. You want to know how retarded I am and how far out I am and how 
distant I am from my own goddamn career. Yeah. I did a Disney movie and was not aware of it. Yes. Uh, when they sent me the movie that I was in, I thought it was the preview or the movie that was going to come out before my cartoon was going to come the out. The real talent performed. And, and, the, the Tim Allen yeah. and all the other talent was in, and I ended up giving them away without even looking at them because I didn't assume that I was in it. Somewhere along the line, I did the voiceover for the current Buzz Lightyear movie that's out on video and had no idea that I was doing it. And uh, as somebody who knew me well said, well, they probably told you at some point, and you didn't listen. Yeah. And I said, I started to object, and then I thought, no, you're right. I'm sure they did, and it was just one more thing I wasn't listening to. So if anyone uh, wants to hear uh, the uh, fabulous Commander Nebula on the uh, Buzz Lightyear video, they can uh, go out and get it. It looks pretty good. Of course, I just fast-forwarded it to my scene. Mm. Jennifer? Jennifer? She's got to be sleeping. Night, in the dark and minutes. can't sleep at night. It's ironic that she may be sleeping now. No greater tribute you can pay to well, a radio this show. Oh, this, 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 this is the way she should <laughs> deal with Start listening to the show. More powerful than any sedative. Adam's Garbage Man story <laughs> again. <laughs> Hey, listen, you kids, that, or any of you insomniacs, any folks, any folks out there having difficulty sleeping, I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, we'll set up a little time, let's say a few nights from now, where I tell one of my famous high school football stories. Oh. And then what you do is you, ah, I'll tell the story about me hitting a home run in high school with a bloody nose. Oh. This is a great story I've told yeah. many, many times on the air. Now, what you do is you record this. And then you can take it with you when you travel. You can play it on weekends. No, I have a better idea. We should create one of those, you know, those little sound machines that create background noises. Right. One of the settings could be Corolla Storm. Adam, it, it's called, it, it says, it, it, it'll be called AR, Adam and, Rambles. And there's just a, a little sign of a foot, little thing of a football there? <laughs> no, it's like a, a Brillo head <laughs> on a microphone, right? Yeah. And it just sounds like this. It's okay, here's what you would hear. So it'd be like rain, babbling brook. Uh, um, autumn in in uh, New England, New England, and then Adam rambles, yeah. and and that setting would be like ah blah 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 <laughs> blah 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 garbage man blah 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 taxes blah 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 blah, blah 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 kiss my ass blah 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 parking enforcement personnel blah 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 blah, blah dad blah 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 grandma blah 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 ma blah 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 football blah 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 baseball blah 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 construction blah 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 not getting paid now blah 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 kiss my ass literally millionaire blah 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 literally a millionaire I mean, don't you think I'd put him right down? That'd be like a tranquilizer dart. Well, could create some awful flashbacks, though, too. Yeah. You have to be real careful with it. One of the things that go too bad. I'm not having bad dreams. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take her sizzle little break before I fall asleep. Uh, hey, Jennifer's still there. Is she there? She's on hold for 90 minutes. She's asleep. I really do think she's asleep. Hey, let's listen. Turn her up now. There she is. And you think I can hear breathing. Yeah, Chicks okay. don't snore. And they have real short issues. Yeah. yeah. Real short expression. They, they breathe like rabbits, Chick Chicks. Okay. Hey, remember when our security guard fell asleep on the sofa? <laughs> <laughs> I got a 20-foot mic extension and brought it out and put it next to him and he was sawing logs out there. Just sawing. And we did the whole show and we check in with the sofa mic and he was out there snoring. And uh, I think he got came the next day. Yeah, he was not here the next day. I gotta believe it's not my fault. Though. That's why when they fall asleep, they're asleep in their cars. Right. All right. We'll take a little break. We'll be back. Yep, it is love line. I'm Corolla. That is uh, Doctor Group. She's got a phone call that uh, one of my friends got arrested for having a pot plant in his house. That's uh. Just where we want our tax dollars going. Don't you know, I told Bill Martin that I wanted to go out with you on the show again and talk about victimless crimes and teen pregnancy and all the stuff we scream about abuse and parenting and I wanted to all the stuff we scream about here. I want to talk about yeah on PI. And he said, "Who are you?" No, I said, "Yeah, done." Really? Yeah. 
Listen, they don't like the couples thing on PR, but that's what they're doing. I got to do uh, just a uh, just a just a very minor jag here, everybody. Do you realize what percentage of people are who are in prison are there because of victimless crimes, mm -hmm. the prostitution, or pandering for prostitution, or pot, or drugs, or whatever stuff they bring upon themselves actually and don't hurt anybody and how much money and resources we have tied up in this godforsaken country of ours stopping people that we don't want stopped right and here's so my aren't contention stop anyway. that aren't going to stop anyway but i've said this a thousand times and i know uh, the uh, law enforcement personnel isn't very excited to hear this particular opinion but here is your job you do what we want you to do. Let's not lose sight of that. Well, I think they would agree with that. Well, there's a lot more guys. And listen, there's three guys sitting around staking out the porn theater to bust Pee Wee Herman. And I don't blame them. If you're a cop, what detail you want to be on? Sitting around watching porn or rolling through some gang-infested area getting shot at? Right. Where do you, where do you want to be? Where do you want to be as a cop? Getting shot at or watching porn? Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Of course you want to be on that detail. But listen, you're an extension of us, and you do what we think is important. And I know this starts with uh, the government and the uh, legislation yeah. and the lawmakers. But listen, you crazy idiots. If a guy's got a pot plant in his apartment and he wants to grow it and roll it or hump it or do whatever he wants to do with it, that's his goddamn business. I mean, what kind of country are we living in? Seriously, yeah. what are the founding fathers? What do you think the founding fathers would have thought of somebody coming into your home and arresting you because of a plant that you had growing in your sink? You think they would have been excited about that notion? And all you a holes that are out there yelling about uh, uh, not wanting to register guns and uh not wanting to get your car smogged and uh not wanting not wanting government not wanting big, big government intruding in our lives where are you on this stuff i don't hear you yapping about the pot well i was talking about Native about him. where are they he, with he, that? he agrees with you on this one he, he he just hasn't gotten behind that yet because he, his question to me was when do we decide that this is a politically untouchable issue why is that untouchable why can't i start talking about it the political pundits won't let him get near it he said hey i want to talk about this what that's a pop thing. Yeah, or them. drugs in general. Yeah, he thinks they Or them. what you want to do to yourself when you're on your own property and on your own time. Whether you want to drink a fifth of tequila, whether you want to drink a fifth of your own urine, whether you want to spank off to some midget clown porn, or whether you want to roll a doobie. You are not breaking any laws. You are inside of your own home. The notion that I pay a ton of taxes, own a home, and can't grow a pot plant in my backyard, to me, is unconstitutional. Mm. Yeah. And the fact that someone can come onto my property and arrest me for that when I'm not driving on it and I'm paying my taxes is ridiculous. you got to get behind the Todd McCormick. Oh, well, he's... He's got a little up the deep, but he's got 7,000 pot plants on someone else's property that he rents. Yeah. It's not quite the same thing. But the point is, is, is this where we want our money spent? Mm -hmm. How many officers got to show up at the house? How much does it cost to process this? Mm -hmm. How much is it going to cost this guy to get an attorney? How much energy and resources goes into nothing? Nothing! Zero! Zero effect on society. Zero! One adult with one pot plant, not in his apartment. But you know what? I think it's going to be zero. It's going to take about 20 more years for this really to be mainstream, mainstream. Cops. No, you know, we, we need to be 50. Oh, oh, listen to me. That to be, Politicians you know? and then need to tell cops, here's what you do. And here's, okay, let me say two things real fast. I'll oh, get back to the show. Of course. Of course. As politicians, you know what your job is? You do what the F we want you to do. Figure out what we want to do. Not to do. We can all agree we don't give a rat's ass about some guy who's got a pot plant in his crappy apartment. Mm -hmm. All right? Then you tell the cops to do what you want them to do, which is what we want them to do, which is what we told your sorry ass to do. That's the way it has to work. And guys who are going out and getting laid, and we don't want a hundred of you trying to bust Heidi Fleiss. We don't want... Five of you camped out in some Dade, Dade County uh, porn 
shop trying to bust Pee Wee Herman, and we don't want a bunch of you rolling in busting my friend with a pot plant. Because it doesn't affect us. We don't care. We're worried about our own safety. Not about guys who are whacking off or getting stoned. Why that is not the easiest thing to figure out in the entire planet, I don't know. Why that wasn't abolished years ago and why no one is talking about it, I can't figure out. And where are you gun pussies? Because Hold well, on a second. Where are you pussies? Always talking about your amendments and your rights. Because Where are you? Where are you when it comes to this? You know what, You're hiding, you pussies. Religion. You're a bunch of right-wing, God-fearing freaks, and all you care about is your guns and abortion, but you don't care about anything like this. Reli Nothing real. Religion figures into American politics. Of course American it politics. does. Where are you gun wackos when it comes to this sort of stuff? Oh, if they come in to confiscate one of your precious 30-round banana clips, you're raising hell. Hey, you're sitting here making an argument that you can have a 30-round banana clip on your sink, but you can't have a pot plant on your sink. Why isn't it the same dude? You know what I mean? Where's Rush Limbaugh? Rush Limbaugh and all these other right-wing Republican jack-offs are yelling constantly about uh, gun, 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 a constitution, anti-American, constitution, gun, 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 gun. But what about a pot plant? What's the difference? It's the state infringing upon your right, your freedom, your God-given American rights. That's what it is. Where are you pussies when it comes to this? You're off polishing your guns. That's where you are. How come? Where? Oh, why isn't that the same guy? Because we need a new party for that one. Hale? Yes. 23. All right, listen, now I'm sweaty. <laughs> I'm grossed out. What's up, Joe? That's okay. Um, I have a friend that's 26 years old, and... He gets off a lot, and he can get off by himself. But while he's having sex, he has to wait until she's done and go get off himself. Hmm. And I, I'm really interested in him. How do you know this without being his girlfriend? I talk to him a lot. Where <laughs> this is kind of like what was it? Reeves that, can't, that has that old aphorism about uh, the real thing. But I also have. No, that's snake. Snake. Yeah, masturbation. Uh, sex is good, but it's not the real thing. Right. Yeah. See, I can get off. The, the wheeze is the wheeze's aphorism is juice them up and go. <laughs> a little bit different. Nice. It's got to do with uh, Boone's Farm and women. All right. So uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Listen. Who cares? Why Why don't you start dating him then? Because he. <sighs> I don't know that he's actually interested in me. Why wouldn't he be? And what would make you think that he wasn't? Well, I I put myself down a lot. No, oh, listen, what's wrong with you? What What's wrong with you? I'm fat. I've yeah. got a child. Yeah, what's up? What, what are you coming in at? <laughs> I'm a single mother, to put it bluntly. How, how tall are you? I am 23. 23 inches tall? Now, how tall are you? I'm 5'6". Five, 5'6", six. Right, six, how much you weigh? I weigh 260 uh, pounds. 260, all right. Let me do the radio math here. 5'6", 260. Carry 5, we're going to 4. Ooh, we're at 5'4 and a quarter, 283. So that's uh, that's a lot of gal. And what are, you doing, uh, what are you doing to lose the weight? Well, I... <laughs> I do Tai Bo, but then I also just, I go out dancing a lot. You go out and dance? Yeah. Did you see a dietitian or anything like that? Actually, I I have a really, really tight diet to where I... Oh, shit. You should write a book. <laughs> I eat once a day. Five four two eighty. You got to write a book. Uh, Gail, uh, uh, if you had followed dietary plan, you would know that eating once a day is probably the worst way to lose weight. You know, I know that. Okay. But so, I don't, see, I I've had two brain surgeries. For what? I have had brain cancer. Uh huh. And right now it's in remission. Right. But I'm on a whole bunch of pills that takes away my appetite. Okay. So uh, I yeah. can't eat, and I try to force myself to eat. Yeah. But I can't. Well, what, what do you eat once a day? Six foot sub? <laughs> no. It's <laughs> two eighty. I mean, well, you got to eat something that once a day, right? I weigh two sixty, and I did the radio math. I got you up at two eighty three. Now, what do you eat at lunch or whatever? 
I eat. I eat red meat. I eat just whatever my daughter eats when I feel like fixing. Strain peas. How old's your daughter? Um, my daughter is 19 months old. Um, so she eats uh, regurgitated yams, and that's what you eat? No, she doesn't eat regurgitated. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me talk to Drew. Oh, my God, Jesus Christ. Sure, I want to put this call in the cart so I can feel better about myself when I'm complaining. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is a tough life here. Yeah. All right, who is this, Gail? Yeah. All right, I'm going to make Gail feel better. Right. Right. I'm going to do it in about 30 seconds. Right. One of my amazing uh, inspirations. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, I make you money to real estate. <laughs> oh, God. You see that Porsche? That's my toy. That scare boat? That's my toy. Those Coke bitches on there? That's other people's toy, but they let me use them for commercial. I wish I had all that. All right, listen, listen. Gail, listen to me, baby. Uh huh. All right, you've been through a lot, okay? Yeah. And uh, you've had a tough life. But that's all right. You're 23. Uh huh. That's nothing. You you got you got plenty of time and plenty of time. And all you got to do is change very slowly but consistently, and you can carve yourself out the kind of life that you want for you and for your child. Most importantly, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you get with a dietitian. You get on a plan. You don't just eat once a day and eat what your kids eating. Your kids eating uh, cotton candy. And uh, <clears throat> and candy corn. You got to get yourself on a little diet. You got to get yourself a little exercise. Eat three times a day. Meet a dietitian. And uh, as far as uh, the sex and the men and all that kind of stuff, that all come. But first, you got to get yourself. You got to take care of yourself. I'm going to the guy out anyway. It's just to see. He's yeah. You talk to a lot. And you can see. You know, guys. Black guy? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not going to work. Or. No, he's not black. But but guys do tend to maintain friendships when it's a friendship they want. Yeah. So. But listen, oh, hold on, one more time. Hey, Gail. Yeah. Hey, th don't look at yourself as damaged goods or or used property or anything like that. You're Gail. You're fine. You take care of yourself. Okay. I wish I was fine. Well, <laughs> you be fine and you be strong on behalf of that daughter of yours. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Do you have uh, the biological dad? Is he around? Oh, God, every once in a while when he wants to be. Does, mm -hmm. he, does he throw any money your way? $20 a month. $20. Ooh. Oh, my God. What's, what, what, $20, $20 a month? Uh-huh. And I am through recovery services, but he, he's got a full-time job and he's on disability. How do you, um... All right, I don't want to know. No. All right, sorry. Okay, listen. Remember my uh, weed and seed program? Except mm -hmm. for I'm just weeding, I'm not receiving. You going to weed this guy? I might do some serious weeding in this situation, yeah. Here we go. Go to break. Um, disability, he's working full time, he gives me 20 bucks a month, and uh, you guys are pissed at the rich, the rich man. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, we'll speak to Amber, the mystery call. Mm -hmm. That's one of my new radio tactics. Mm -hmm. Yeah! All right, I shot my wad in the first hour of 45 minutes of this show, so I'm going to call. Drew, you with me? Let's go. Talk to the mystery call. Oh, Amber. Oh, yeah, right. Hey, Amber? Yeah. You 15? Yeah. Yeah, what's up? Okay, my dad thinks that I'm having sex and I'm using drugs and I'm not, and I'm afraid he's going to kick me out. Mm -hmm. Where did you get this uh, feeling? Because, like, he knows some of my friends from when I was, like, five years old, and they got into doing that. Yeah. And he automatically thinks that I am because, like, I'll go out to lunch with my friends or something. Yeah, he's going to kick you out based on no incidents. Yeah. And, and no uh, problems behaviorally with you? Nothing. Yeah. Well, what are you gonna do? Well, he's, yeah. I don't believe her. I don't believe him. I don't believe. I don't believe him or her. Mm -hmm. Your dad's not gonna toss you out based on nothing. Or you're doing something. I'm not doing this. Well, well, then he's not gonna toss you out. He doesn't believe me though because like he comes home and he's already drunk and everything else. Oh. Where's he coming home from? Work. Yeah. Hey, uh, what kind of work do you do? 
He's a truck driver. Oh, well, good thing he's drunk when he comes home. And, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, he, and he has nothing to go on. Never found any pot on you? Nothing. Nothing. Grades are good at school. My grades aren't great, but... He's not concerned about anything in terms of yeah. who you're hanging with? Or... Uh-uh. All right, well, listen. All you can do is give him nothing to go off of, yeah. and that's about it. All he ever talks about, though, is how he's going to kick me out. Where's your mom? She died. Oof. You know, grandma, grandpa? He, he kicked her out during the winter. She was frozen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just outside a big ice cube. <laughs> what happened? To my mom? Yeah. Yeah. She had a brain tumor. Oh, yeah. boy. How long ago was that? Um, About six years. Yeah, boy. I'm sure this is just the way she would have wanted it to. Truck driving, accusing dad, trying to kick you out of the house. <laughs> hey, uh, Amber. Yeah? What about you having a uh, nice uh, heart-to-heart with your dad on, uh, let's say, Sunday morning? When he's not been drinking. The holiest of all days when he's hung over. And uh, say to him, listen, Dad, I'm your daughter. I love you. I wouldn't lie to you. I know some of these people are doing X, Y, and Z. I'm not doing it. And I hope you know that and trust me. I tried that before and he doesn't listen. Oh, he right. doesn't so, no, listen. Who cares? But he's so I, 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 don't, I don't believe her. That she's been perfect. You don't believe that. I, I believe this guy's an idiot. Yep. I also believe that if her grades are good and she's not getting into trouble and he's not finding uh, rolling papers in her jeans when he's doing the wash and all that kind of stuff and he never found anything and he just sits there and says, I'm going to throw you out of the house for doing drugs, that she's lying, that there's something she's leaving out. Right. Or he's got a brain tumor, too. Right, right. Uh, the guy's, uh, I'm sure the guy's not a great guy, but I'm sure he's not Satan. If you're not giving him anything to go off of, see, we get a lot of that on this show. We get a lot of, my teacher has it in for me. What'd you do? Nothing. Yeah. Did you ever do anything? Nothing. My boss has it in. My girlfriend, or my girlfriend's parents. What have you said to him? Nothing. I never believe it. People rarely have it in, especially for their own daughter, when they do zero. So I don't know if he's if he's going to kick you out of the house and uh, then why don't you you better talk to a friend and find a place to stay. Grandparents. Uh, uh, he's not kicking around. Rebecca. Yes. You're 24. Yes. What's up? Um. Recently, whenever I have sex and have an orgasm afterwards, my I guess my clit and. Everything down there gets really hard and stays hard for a long time. And it hurts, it's uncomfortable, and it doesn't happen when I masturbate. It's only when I have sex. Hmm. Petrified poontang. Have you heard of that? <laughs> no. Do you think? Syndrome? Hmm. What? Stays hard down there? Now, yeah. what, the whole area stays hard? No, just a small area. It's almost like a... Uh, Are you on medication? No. Any medicine? No, uh, birth control. Which one? Uh, low orval. And have you noticed this just since being on the pill, or is that... No, I, it's, I've been dating the same guy for about five years, and I've been on that as long. Hmm. And it's just been within the last six weeks or so. No medicine, nothing else. No, 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 no I don't. Uh, uh, histamines, anything like that? She is on a new drug called uh, orthostifoclita. <laughs> uh, yeah, anti, uh, yeah, I wish. Allergen, have you heard of that? <laughs> well, seriously, Rebecca, anything over the counter... Honestly, honestly, Nothing. and that's Zero. what I'm concerned, is there's no reason, mm. um, and it's kind of freaking me out a little bit, because I'll wake up in the middle of the night, and it's still hard. Mm. Well, it's just, it's, it's blood in there that does that irritation. And yeah. Why why is that staying that way? Men get something like that, too, but usually it's from Do I need to ice it? <laughs> well, icing would, might help decrease the, the, the blood the blood. Oh, rigor mortis. Could irritate. be rigor mortis setting it, maybe it's dead. <laughs> No, I I don't believe it's a dad, but why? My I just don't understand why it would. Only All right. Well, listen, dad. that that's you. That's how. There's certain yeah. things you do that are you. I don't know. Obviously, have somebody take a look at the anatomy, make sure that's okay. Hey, just, Public exam. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, some more humor that's missing from TV. Mm-hmm. Rigor mortis. Yeah, yeah. A lot of rigor mortis humor. Yes. Yeah. Just rigor mortis. Just the word rigor mortis yeah. is missing from the television lexicon. I got worked into most TV sitcoms. Rigor mortis. A lot of rigor mortis. Rigor mortis setting in. Stuff would happen. You know, like, uh, you know, some guy would uh, 
grab a uh, piece of spaghetti that had dried up and say that rigor mortis had set in. Yeah. I think something got hard or something with rigor mortis. And even the word rigor mortis just got thrown around. Sure. Don't hear about rigor mortis on TV anymore. When was that? Most of that sort of Gilligan's Island. It was that or... era, but did somebody? The word rigor mortis must have been around for a while. Yeah. How long oh, has yeah. it been around? Oh, Latin. It's Latin, so it's been at least seventy years. <laughs> is what you're saying, right? And the point is, is it only it, it caught on from like uh, sixty-eight to seventy-four, and that was it. Let me talk to this guy real fast, Brian. Yeah, what's up? You're 21? Yes. You're uh, gay and you constantly cheat on your boyfriend with strangers? Uh, it's not strangers. It's like people that like, huddle the club and like, hang out with them. And so you're, you're, you're putting you, both of you in harm's way, right? Right. You're screwing with the relationship, and if you can't stop doing that, that's the time for therapy. It really is. And he has no clue what is going on. Well, you're, you're... Good. Don't tell me. You're wearing a condom? Uh, no, I'm not. Oh, my God. All right. Listen, this is how all you gays get to him. No, uh, this is the deal. Actually, I just had an STD, and I had to get him, like, treated for it, too. Well, uh, there you go. And he was you were able to do it without him suspecting anything? Um, the only way I could do that was, it's called, uh, I forgot what it's called. It's like gonorrhea, but it's not. Chlamydia? No, uh, it's like U UND. Or mm, yeah, you, 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 no, I'm going to copy your right All now. right, well, listen, here, we're on time. Here's my point. Uh, stop it. Yeah. Or put a condom on. Or both. Stop it and put a condom on. I agree with Drew. Okay, well, I'm really into that uh, Adam Sleepy Kind message. They are. <laughs> blah, 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 pot plant in your own house. <laughs> blah, 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 park enforcement. The man. The man. All right, we'll take ourselves a little break. And uh, about 22 hours. Oh, that's right. And you'll be back next Sunday. Yeah. I'm going to... Coolio tomorrow night. Coolio, everybody, tomorrow night. So until next time, Santa Pro with Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Love Life. The opinions expressed on the show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or the station. The producer for Love Life is Hannibal Love Life is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.